Today I'm going to show you how to knit my v-neck wildwood sweater vest here. It is a simple sweater vest knit in the round from the bottom up and then you separate the fronts and the backs, you finish knitting the back and then you knit the left front and the right front and finish everything off with ribbing. So if you click the link in my video description, it'll take you links to purchase the pattern. Once you've purchased the pattern, um, you can see all the information. When you go to the product listing, you'll be able to see the gauge and all the supplies that you need. And um, it is knit in eight different sizes for you and you can pick which size makes sense. I knit a size three for a 43 inch circumference. I'm about a 36, 37 inch bust so that gave me almost six inches of positive ease if you don't want it to fit that big you can go down in a size so just make sure you take a look at the finished bust measurements and decide which size makes sense for you it's knit on nine millimeter needles with lion brand respun thick and quick yarn you do not have to use this yarn you can pick a different yarn that will get you the same gauge all right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, to knit the sweater vest, you're gonna need two skeins of Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick Yarn or a similar yarn. This is considered a super bulky weight yarn. This is the color silver. However, I did wanna mention it is kind of a thinner, super bulky weight yarn. It is a bit thinner than Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick Yarn. So just keep that in mind and make sure you check your gauge. You're gonna need a tape measure to measure length. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a tapestry needle, one stitch marker, some scrap yarn, and of course your 9mm US 13 circular knitting needles. You can use anything from like 32 inches to 40 inches depending on what size. The larger sizes you can use a little bit longer needles. And just remember that knitting needles are measured from tip to tip in length. I'm going to cast on the number of stitches for my size using my 9mm circular knitting needles. These come in typically 32 inch or 40 inches long. These are actually closer to 36 inches. And you measure circular needles from end to end. So determine, to determine how long of a tail you need to cast on for your stitches, I like to just wrap my yarn around the needle about 10 times. And then use that length to measure how long I need for the number of stitches. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so I am just going to take the end of that tail now and I am going to make a slip knot. This will be my first stitch that I cast on. Now I'm going to make sure my tail is in front and I am going to cast on the number of stitches going under the yarn around my thumb, over the yarn around my index finger and pulling through. And you're going to continue casting on until you've casted on the number of stitches you're supposed to cast on for your size. So if you are knitting a size 3, you reference the third number in the number of cast on stitches in the pattern. When you've got the number of cast on stitches, cast on your needles that you're supposed to for your size. Go ahead and cast on one extra stitch. We're gonna use this to join the work in the round and then we will end up dropping that stitch. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to join in the round is to make sure that your stitches aren't twisted. So you can start to slide your stitches down onto the other needle because we need to join the work. And you can make sure that your stitches are lying flat so that the cast on edge is on the interior of the circle here. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure the stitches are kind of towards the end. And then you're gonna take that last stitch on the left-hand needle, move it over to the right-hand needle. 
Then you're gonna take what was the last stitch on the right hand needle and move it over the stitch we just slipped over and then we're going to drop that stitch and pull the work. You can take your stitch marker at this point, place it on the needle, and now we're ready to work in the round. And when you start working, this is another good spot to, or another good time to make sure that your work isn't twisted. And then you're going to start your one by one rib. And to do our one by one rib, rib we simply knit one, move the yarn in front, purl one. Knit one, purl one. This is how I knit and this is how I purl. You might do this a little differently, but this is what works for me. So you're gonna continue knitting one and purling one all the way across the work, all the way across the round here until we get all the way back around to the stitch marker. I'm working my way around this first round. I'm nearing the end of my first round here and I should end on a purl stitch because I started with a knit stitch and we have an even number of stitches. So once you get to the last stitch, you work that stitch and then all you do is slip that stitch marker over to the next needle. Now we know we've started or we need to start on our next round. So this is my second round here. So I'm gonna continue knitting one and purling one. We're knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. And you can see the stitches. That's a knit stitch. This is a purl stitch. So you continue working this knit one, purl one, until you've knit about three inches long. All right, now I'm at the point where I'm finishing my last ribbed round because I'm at the point where my work, my ribbing is three inches. So once you finish that last round, you're gonna begin stacking that stitch for the body. So you just slip the stitch marker and now we're just knitting every stitch every round. So you'll just knit all of the way across. Knit every stitch. And then the same thing when you near the end of your first stockinette stitch round, you just simply slip the marker and continue knitting all of the stitches. So stockinette, when you knit in the round, is knitting every round. When you're knitting flat and you're working back and forth and you're knitting rows, you will knit on the right side of the work and purl on the wrong side of the work. But we are knitting in the round, so we are knitting, we're working in the round, so we are knitting every single row. So you're gonna continue knitting the body here until the specified length. The pattern will give you the length that you need to knit to from the cast on edge. So it'll be the entire work. So follow the directions in the pattern and knit stack a net stitch until your entire work reaches the length it's supposed to reach until we start working the back. We're gonna separate half of the work after we do this part for the front and the back. Okay, so now I've knit the body to the length that I'm supposed to knit. I am measuring from the cast on edge all the way up to where the yarn is so I can make sure my length is correct. So now we are going to work to, I'm just finishing this last round here, I'm going to slip the stitch marker. And now we're going to start working the back. And when we work the back, we're gonna be working back and forth. So first we're going to work a few stitches, do a decrease, work across, do a decrease, and finish off that back. And then we're gonna place the front stitches on a piece of waist yarn so we can just work back and forth. We've been working in the round, and now when it's time to work the back, we're just gonna work the back back and forth in order to make room for our armholes. So to begin the back, we're gonna knit three stitches.
And then now we're going to reduce a stitch, decrease a stitch by slipping one, knitting one, and then we're going to pass that slip stitch over. So we've just reduced a stitch. So now we are starting to decrease for our underarms. So then you're going to knit across the specified stitches you're supposed to knit across. We're going to knit all the way across the back and then we're going to do another decrease slanting the other direction. So you can tell we have a decrease slanting this way right now. We're going to do another decrease slanting the other way so that the work is mirrored. Okay, I've completed the number of knit stitches I'm supposed to complete before I'm supposed to do my next decrease on the other side of the work. To do the next decrease, we're going to just simply knit two stitches together. That will create a decrease that leans to the right. And then we're going to knit three stitches. So we've, we've knit across the back now and we're going to stop and we're going to remove these front stitches so that we can turn the work and work back across the back. So to remove the front stitches, we're going to take our tapestry needle. We're going to take a long piece of waste yarn that will fit all of those stitches and it, um, your front and your front stitches are equal to half of the stitches you cast on. So the fronts and the back are the equal are equal. So you're going to take your tapestry needle threaded with that waist yarn and you're going to just simply slide these stitches off the left hand needle onto this piece of waist yarn and we're going to make sure that this needle keeps those back stitches on. So you're just going to work all the way across those front stitches. You're going to work to that stitch marker because that denotes the beginning of the round. So we worked across the back half of the stitches doing two decreases. Now we're just removing half of the stitches, which are the front stitches. So that should get us all the way back around to that beginning of round marker. One thing I like to do is kind of slide my stitches back onto that needle a little bit so I don't drop them. And then you just keep continuing removing the stitches and you can just kind of slide them down and you can tell here's the stitch marker so I need to remove the rest of these stitches all of the way to that stitch marker. Some people don't remove their stitches they can just figure out how to work back and forth without removing the stitches. If you're a newer knitter I think it's easier just to remove those stitches. Okay, so you can now remove the stitch marker once you've gotten there. I'm gonna pull this through, and now I'm gonna pull the tapestry needle through, making sure that I don't pull all the way through and lose the tail on this side. And so now I'm just gonna kind of evenly spread out the stitches, and now we are ready to work back and forth for the back. So you're going to want to find the spot where the yarn is still attached here. You can slide your stitches back on your needle. I'm going to get my tapestry needle out of the way, my stitch marker out of the way. Now we're going to be working back and forth flat. So you're going to turn the work so that you see the wrong side of the work and you're simply going to work back purling. So we're working stockinette so we're on the wrong side so we're simply going to just purl all of the way across the work. I'm almost finished purling across this row here. I'm at the end. Now I'm going to turn the work and now we're back on the right side of the work and you can see our left leaning decrease here. So now we're going to work this side similarly to what we just did. We're going to knit three stitches we're going to slip a stitch, knit a stitch, and then pass that slip stitch over. Unfortunately, my yarn was joined there, but so now we have another decrease that leans to the left. And now we're going to knit to five stitches to the end here.
All right, I've got five stitches left. You can see my previous decrease here. So we're gonna knit two together now and then knit to the end. So we've made two decrease rows now and we're gonna continue in this fashion. We're gonna turn the work and purl back. So we're only doing decreases on right side rows. So you're gonna continue decreasing two stitches on the right side, purling back on the wrong side until you've completed the number of decreases or you have the number of stitches left that you're supposed to have for your size. So purl all the way back and continue decreasing on the right side, purling back on the wrong side until you have the number of stitches you're supposed to have. And you're gonna wanna end after you've completed a wrong side row, a purl row. So I will see you back here in a little bit. I'm finishing up a wrong side row and I'm gonna turn the work and I've completed the number of decreases and have the right amount of stitches that I'm supposed to have for my size. So the underarm decreases should look like this. These are left leaning decreases and these are right, de right leaning decreases. And again, just make sure you count and you should have an even number of stitches because you should have decreased the same amount on each side. So now we're gonna just complete stockinette stitch, which is knitting on the right side of the work and purling on the wrong side of the work until our whole piece measures the length it's supposed to measure. So you'll measure from the bottom, from the cast on edge to where the work is up here. You'll need to get your work to the total length it's supposed to be or the length you would like it to be. Just know that um, if you increase the length at the top here, you'll be increasing the underarm length as well. So just keep that in mind. So you're gonna knit on the right side of the work and purl on the wrong side of the work until you hit the length you're supposed to hit for your size and you're gonna end after you've completed a wrong side row. Again, you're just knitting every stitch, you're not gonna decrease. And when you get to the end, you just do the same thing as you did before, turn the work and purl back. Finishing up a wrong side row here, and I think I'm at the length I need to be at, but um, I'm gonna measure it so you can see I did my, de my underarm decreases and then I knit straight stockinette. And now I'm just gonna lay the work flat and measure it from the cast on edge to the top of my work to make sure I'm at the length. I would like to be at which I am now and now we are going to bind off on the right side of the work so the side where you can see the knit stitches so we're just going to do a simple bind off we're going to be seaming the tops of the shoulders so I am going to knit two stitches and then slip that first stitch over the second stitch so I've just bound off a stitch knit one stitch, slip that stitch over, and try to do your best to keep the tension consistent as you work all the way across. But you continue knitting and lifting that stitch over and binding off as you go. So you should never have more than two stitches on the right hand needle at one time. And then I'll show you what to do when you get towards the end. I'm nearing the end here and I'm going to bind off as far as I can go. And when I have one stitch left, I am going to leave a tail about that long, snip the work and pull the yarn through. 
So now we have bound off at the top of the back. So we have finished the back. You can see we have our decreases and then the work is straight until the top of the shoulders and we have bound off. Okay, now we are gonna put half of the front stitches back on the needle so we can work the left front. We're gonna work this side of the, half the stitches over here. This is considered the left front because if you were to actually put it on, it's on your left side. So I am going to pick up the number of stitches the pattern tells me to for my size. So I'm just gonna insert my needle over here and start picking up these stitches like this so that the stitch is facing this way so that when we go to knit, our stitches will be facing the right direction. You wanna pick up the work so that you can knit it in the right direction. So continue picking up the stitches back on the needle, the number of stitches you're supposed to pick up for your size. All right. So now when I have all my stitches, I like to pull the um, the needle through because then it just makes it a little easier to pull out this yarn. So I've got my waist yarn holding my right front stitches. Now we are going to work on the left front across half of the front stitches and I am going to join my work with a new piece of yarn and we are gonna join on the right side at this left underarm here. So I'm gonna push my needle back through. And we're actually going to decrease right away, just as we have before. We are going to decrease for the underarm and at the V. And just to explain, we're gonna continue, we're gonna be doing two different kinds of decreases. So we're gonna be decreasing for the underarm on every right side row, just as we have before on the back. But then every other right side row, we are going to be decreasing at the V neck to go up this way. So we have a steeper decrease at the underarm than we do at the V-neck because that is more of a gradual decrease. So I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna decrease for both the underarm and the V-neck on this very first right side row. So we're gonna do what we did before. And when we start knitting, we literally just start knitting. And I'm gonna knit three stitches. And you can kind of tug on this yarn this piece of yarn to keep it taut here. We're gonna knit three, then we're going to slip one, knit one, and then pass that slip stitch over so we reduce the same way. We're doing a left leaning decrease. Then we are going to knit until three stitches to the end this time. This is a little different. We're gonna be decreasing a little bit closer to the V-neck. Now, when I have three stitches left, I'm going to knit two together to do a right-leaning decrease, and then I'm going to knit one. And now we're simply going to turn the work and purl all the way back across those front stitches. So we've just reduced two stitches on our left front. So I'm purling all the way back. Here's where we joined the yarn and it can be a little wonky. You can just pull on that tail. If you need to tighten up the stitches, we're gonna turn the work and we're back on the right side. So again, we always decrease at the underarm on the right side and we just did a decrease on the right side, the last row for the V-neck, so we will not decrease this time. So again, we decrease every right side row at the underarm and every other right side row at the V-neck. So I'm going to continue to knit three stitches, slip one, knit one, pass that slip stitch over. So that is my underarm decrease. And now I'm simply gonna just knit all the way to the end. 
All right, I've got three stitches left. I don't need to decrease. I'm just going to knit all the way to the end. And then we turn the work and we purl back. All right, finish my wrong side row. Okay, so I have just completed four rows, two decreases over on the underarm and one decrease at the V-neck. So now it's time to decrease again at the V-neck. So again, every other right side row, we decrease at the V-neck. Every right side row, we decrease at the underarm. So you're gonna continue along. Make sure you carefully reference what to do in your size. Every size is a little different with the number of decreases at the V-neck and the underarm. You will be completing the same number of decreases at the underarm on the front as you did on the back, but then just pay attention to how many decreases you're going to be working at the same time for the V-neck every other right side row. So I'm gonna show you one more time how to do the decrease at the V-neck. You have three, when you have three stitches left, it's time to do the decrease and you simply just knit two together and then you'll knit the last stitch. And then I just wanted to show you the difference. You can start to see here. You can start to see the difference. So we're doing a gradual decrease over here, leaning to the right. And then we have a steeper decrease over here, leaning towards the left. Just wanted to note, you're gonna finish doing the underarm decreases before you finish doing the V-neck decreases. So I have finished my underarm decreases right now. So now I'm just going to knit across and do my V-neck decrease as I need every other right side row. So that's just something to note. So now I'm just gonna knit to three stitches till the end because it's time to do a V-neck decrease. So just wanted to make sure you realize that. I wanted to also show you how to join yarn, how I like to join yarn. So I'm still knitting the left front and I ran out of yarn. Try to end on the, try to make sure you're keeping track. And I would join the yarn on the end, preferably at the underarm portion and not at the V-neck. You're gonna try to keep this as clean as possible. So take your new piece of yarn and just join it as if you're just starting um, that left front like we did. So I'm just dropped the old strand and I'm working with the new strand and just continue knitting regularly. So, you know, you can um, continue to pull this tighter if you need to, but when we weave in ends at the end of the project, um, you can take care of that. So just continue knitting. So that's how I like to join yarn with sweater vests. All right, I'm on my last V-neck decrease row here. And every size might be a little different with how it ends. So I just finished my last V-neck decrease. I'm gonna turn the work. This is, this is what I'm supposed to do for my size. I'm just gonna purl back. So I end on the right side. Okay, when you're back to the right side of the work, you're just gonna bind off just as you did before and just make sure you have decreased to the number of stitches you're supposed to decrease to before you bind off. And the back of your work should line up with the front of the work. If it's a little off, that's okay because you're gonna be seaming everything at the top. Just make sure if you've made any changes um, that you're doing the ex exact same changes on the opposite front or in opposite direction because um, you just want to make sure that the left and right front are the same length. All right, so I have one stitch left. I'm just going to snip the yarn and pull this through. All right, so I am done with the left front and now we are, are going to work the right front. So we just need to put all of these stitches back on our knitting needle. So I'm going to pick all of these back up. And then once you've got all of those stitches, I'm gonna just pull that through, take out my waist yarn, and I'm gonna slide the stitches through so that they are on 
this side. I'm going to make sure I've got my yarn handy. And I am going to join at the bottom of the v-neck here on the inside. And we're gonna start decreasing right away at the v-neck and at the underarm, but we're going in the opposite direction. So we need to, we're gonna knit one and do a um, slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over so that our v-neck goes this way because we had our v-neck going the other way on this side. And then we're gonna knit till we have five stitches left. Okay, I have five stitches left. I'm simply going to knit two together. So my slant, my stitches are going in that direction and then I'm going to knit to the end. And we just did our first row, two decreases. We're gonna turn the work and purl back. Curl to the end, and this stitch might be a little loose because this is where we joined the yarn, so you can just pull that a little bit, turn the work. And so again, at the beginning of the row now is our V-neck, so we, we're not going to decrease on, on this row at the V-neck because we just did it, but we are gonna decrease again on this row at the underarm, which is at the end of this row now, so everything is mirrored. So we are going to just knit to five stitches to the end. Okay, I've got five stitches left. I'm gonna knit two together and then knit to the end. Turn the work and purl back. Okay, so I've completed four rows. I've completed one v-neck decrease and two underarm decreases. So now it's time to do a v-neck decrease again and an underarm decrease at the same time. So again, every other right side row, you'll make the v-neck decrease first and every row on the right side, you'll be making an underarm decrease. And remember, you will finish the underarm decreases before you finish the v-neck decreases. So continue on in the established pattern. Okay, I have finished my right front and it is the same length as my left front. It's mirror image. And now it's time to seam the top. So if you have a long enough tail, you can thread your tapestry needle. And what we're gonna do is you always wanna make sure you seam from the outside in. So we'll go this way on this side and we'll go this way on this side. So basically I just like to first connect first connect the work by just putting the yarn through the very last stitch there. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna go through the upside down Vs on the bottom, just like this. And then we are gonna go through the bottom of the right side up Vs on the top, just like this. And so you're gonna do that all the way across going through the bottom Vs like that, and the bottom of the Vs facing right side up on the top. So you work all the way across until you are done. Okay, and then when you get to the end, I like to I'm at the last stitch here. I'm gonna go through the last V at the bottom. I like to end on the back and then you just pull the yarn through and let go. And then we will seam this all up and weave in our ends at the very end. So now you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, working from the outside in on the other side. Okay, now it's time to do the armhole ribbing. We're gonna do this on either side. Doesn't matter which side you start with but I'm gonna go down in needle size. So I'm using an eight millimeter, 24 inch circular knitting needle to pick up stitches and do the ribbing. You're gonna to wanna to have a stitch marker handy to denote the beginning and end of the round. Grab your yarn and we're gonna start at the underarm, at the base of the underarm here, and we're gonna work our way up the back and around. And we're gonna be picking up 
three stitches for every four rows. And when you knit perpendicularly, when you pick up stitches perpendicularly to the work, you need to make sure you have some sort of different spacing where you pick up fewer stitches than you have rows because the work is the work will not lay flat if you pick up every stitch for every row. So that's just something to think about. And I've tried this out and picking up three stitches for every four rows works well for me. So what you're gonna do is start at the base here. You're gonna insert your needle and we're gonna be picking up stitches. You see how that last stitch there, there are some holes. So we're gonna be inserting our needle at the base here and we're gonna insert it like this through the last stitch. You're going to make sure you pull the work um, from the bottom up and over so the stitches face the right direction. And you're gonna start to pull this needle through and pick up a stitch. So this will be a little loose. You can hold it with your other hand. Um, so that's one stitch we've picked up. And so I'm gonna go into the very next hole here, the very next row. Pull the yarn underneath and over the needle and pull it through. So now I've picked up two stitches. Now we need to do that spacing. So the way I like to do my spacing, I say one, two, skip a row, three. One, two, skip a row, three. And that ends up being three stitches for every four rows. So I'm gonna skip this next stitch here, insert the needle here, and pull it through. So now I have three stitches for every four rows. So we're gonna continue this all the way around. And then at the end, you just need to make sure you've picked up an even number of stitches. So when we do our knit one, purl one, we end up with the right number of stitches. So now I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. One, two, skip a stitch, skip a row, three, one, two, skip a row, three, one, two, skip a row, three. So continue this all the way around and make sure you have an even number of stitches. So when you get towards the end, count, and then you might have to like finagle where you pick up stitches just to make sure it's an even number of stitches. I've picked up stitches all the way around. I have an odd number right now, so I'm gonna pick up one last stitch here. And then you're going to join the work in the round. You know what, just looking at the gap here, I might pick up two more stitches just so. I don't have too much of a gap here. Okay, so now I'm gonna join in the round. And you might wanna just write down the number of stitches you picked up. So when you go and you pick up stitches on the other side, you're picking up the same number of stitches. So we're gonna join this in the round now. And this is how I kind of join in the round when I'm picking up stitches for the underarm. I slide this over, I slide this stitch back over, and then I, turn the stitch so it's a little twisted here. Um, you don't have to do this. You can just seam everything up at the end, but this is just how I like to join in the round. And then you can put your stitch marker on and you can tighten the tails here and get the stitches a little tighter. And we're gonna just start knitting our one by one rib now. So you knit one, purl one, all the way around and again you should end in a purl stitch because you should have an even number of stitches. I'm nearing the end of my first round of the one by one rib and I just wanted to show you what it's looking like. And again, you might need to pull that stitch a little tighter in the, or pull the piece of yarn, the tail to tighten things up, but you'll be weaving that in at the end. All right, so when you finish your first round, slip the marker and then just do knit one, purl one again. Knit one, purl one. So I'm gonna complete this for about four rounds which is a little over an inch. Um, so you're gonna wanna complete this just under um, an inch and a half so that the last round where we bind off in the one by one rib will get us to about an inch and a half. So for me in this gauge, this is about 
I'll knit four rounds and bind off on the fifth round. So I'll see you back here when I'm ready to bind off and I'll show you how to bind off in one by one rib. All right, I have finished my four rounds, one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna bind off in the one by one rib. So I'm gonna slip the stitch marker. I'm going to work in the pattern. So knit one, purl one, and then bind off one stitch. So I just continue knitting one and purling one and binding off as I go. Got one more stitch to bind off here. I'm gonna work that last purl stitch. Slip that stitch over. I'm gonna cut the yarn, I'm making sure to leave a little bit of a tail. I'm gonna pull this through. I'm going to set the needle down. I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, weave this through the end here, and I'm just going to basically secure the first stitch to the last stitch. And I kind of just bring it back through and make sure I'm on the inside of the work at the end so I can weave this in and I'm just gonna follow the leg of stitches all the way up here. So this is weaving in the end. And basically, you're just trying to get the stitch to be invisible in the work here. And then I will cut this. And now we have our armhole ribbing complete for the vest. So you're gonna wanna do this exact same thing on the other side of the work now, starting at the underarm and picking up stitches. So you'll, you'll start at the underarm and pick up stitches all the way around and do the same thing. Okay, I've got both of the ribbing on the armholes complete. I know I've got the vest facing upside down, but we're gonna start the V-neck um, with the mitered V-neck. So a mitered V-neck basically does two decreases here at the bottom of the V-neck. So that allows for the um, ribbing to lay straight um, so I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna start by picking up one stitch for every stitch across the middle of the back. So the work will, um, we're gonna knit in the round here and we are going to pick up every stitch along the back and pick up three stitches for every four rows along the um, left front. And then we're gonna make sure we pick up the legs of the stitch here at the bottom to make sure we're right at the bottom of the v-neck and then we're going to work up the right front picking up three stitches for every four rows here and then pick up every stitch along the back to finish here all right so we're going to start in the middle of the back like i said it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle just somewhat in the middle here and you're going to insert your needle at the top of the stitch there and start pulling through the first stitch is always the most difficult, making sure you leave a tail here. And like I said, we're gonna pick up every stitch. So you'll just insert your needle and keep picking up every stitch. So we're knitting the same direction of the work. So that is why we're picking up every stitch. And then when we work down the V-neck, we're gonna be working perpendicularly to the work. So we'll need to have some spacing. Okay, I've got my stitches picked up along the back. Now I'm at the left front, so we're gonna pick up two stitches for every three rows. I'm sorry, we're gonna pick up three stitches for every four rows here, and make sure you're grabbing the right piece of yarn here. So I'm going to go one, two, skip a row, three, just like we did before picking up for the armhole. And I'll see you back down here at the V-neck just to show you how to pick up the center of the V-neck stitch. Okay, I've worked my way down that left front here. Now, I just wanna show you how I like to pick up stitches at the base 
of the v-neck so you'll have the stitches coming from this side and the stitches coming from this side and you're just going to want to grab the stitch um, the the right leg of this stitch and the left leg I'm sorry the left leg of this stitch and the right leg of this stitch just so you have a stitch picked up right at the base of the v-neck that's just how I like to do it all right and then now you're gonna work your way up the other side and you're going to do the same thing where you pick up three stitches for every four rows. Okay, I finished picking up stitches along the right front and now on the back I'm going to pick up a stitch for every stitch and then you also need to make sure you've got an even number of stitches picked up. Okay, now I've picked up all my stitches. I am going to place a stitch marker here and just going to start knitting one, purling one. I don't, sometimes when I'm, I'm um, joining on top of the, when I'm joining the work in the round, um, I don't, when I'm um, working the same direction as a stitch, I don't do that crazy thing where I like um, slip the stitches over to join in the round because I'm going to be weaving in this end anyway and it just ends up being cleaner. But that's just me. All right, so we are going to just knit one, purl one every up until the center stitch. Before you get working too far on your v-neck, one thing I wanted to mention, place a removable stitch marker on the v-neck stitch. You're gonna be working one by one rib up until one stitch before that stitch marker, one stitch before that v-neck. So continue working one by one rib until you get to one stitch before that stitch marker. Okay, so I've worked one stitch up until one stitch before that center stitch. Take note of the stitch you ended with. I ended with a knit stitch. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we are going to slip these two stitches as if to knit. Slip them as if to knit. We are going to knit the next stitch. Now we are going to slip those two stitches we slipped over the stitch we just knit. Okay, so we have just decreased two stitches. Okay, so we finished with a knit stitch at, be, right before we did the um, decrease. We're gonna continue with a knit stitch. So continue, knit one, purl one. So we have just decreased two stitches here at the center. So you're gonna continue a one by one rib now to the beginning of the round. And then I'll show you how to do that one more time, how to do the um, miter decrease. Okay, I'm just going to show you what happens when you finish your first round. You just slip that stitch marker and you keep knitting one, purling one. And then I'll show you again, once I get to one stitch before the stitch marker, how to do that miter decrease. All right, I'm one stitch before the stitch marker. I just finished a purl stitch, so just keep that in mind. We are going to slip. So we're one stitch before the stitch marker, so we're going to slip two stitches as if to knit. Knit one, and then we're gonna slip those two stitches back over the stitch we just knit. And now we're gonna continue ribbing with purling because we just purled we're going to continue the stitch we've already or continue in the pattern so there you go that's how you do the mitered v-neck 
Okay, so I have completed five rounds now. We completed four rounds and bound off on the fifth round at the underarm. We're gonna do one more round. It just makes the collar look a little more substantial. So we're gonna bind off on the sixth round. So like I said, I've completed five rounds and we're gonna bind off on the sixth round. So you just, again, same thing. You're gonna work in pattern, knit one, purl one, and bind off. And then just be careful. Um, especially on the collar to just stay consistent with the tension with which you're binding off. This goes over your head. You don't want this to be like crazy tight, um, but you don't want it to be too loose either. So just try to remain consistent with your tension as you bind off. I just wanted to mention when you bind off, when you get to where the miter decreases here, you're going to want to continue doing that in the established pattern. So I've bound off all the way to the first stitch before the, the center stitch. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slip these two stitches, knit one, pass the slip stitch over, and then bind off. Let me just make sure I have my stitch on there. And then I'm just gonna bind off in that same way, okay? So then I'm gonna work the next stitch and bind off as I go, okay? So keep binding off now in one by one rib. Down to my last stitch here for the neckline. Same thing, I'm gonna cut a tail, pull this through. And I'm going to join the work. Pull this back through and then weave in the end just like we did before up through the leg of these stitches here. And then cut the tail off. And now you're gonna wanna take the time to weave in all the other ends. So basically you can close up any armhole gaps. You might have like a little gap at the V-neck that you might wanna clean up a little bit. Um, just take the time to figure out where you need to weave in your ends. And to weave in ends, like around seams, I like to just thread the yarn through and like work my way through the seam. You basically just don't want your extra yarn to come back out. So, whoop, I dropped it. Um, but yeah, so just take the time to weave in your ends and cut all your tails and you're ready to go. Now you've got a beautiful v-neck sweater vest to enjoy. I hope you loved the video. I hope it helped you make something you love to wear. For more projects, please check out my YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you know when I publish new patterns and tutorials. Thanks guys.